Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Yeah, you may be seated. Thank you. We shall talk about a very, very important issue. It has to do with relationship. Not sure, I mean, human relationships are very, very important. That is why we are here today. I'm talking to you here and now because you are there listening to me. If you are not there listening to me, you cannot come here, be talking to the air. They was at home. I say I'm talking to you because I believe you are there listening, paying attention to me. I want to say thank you, thank you for that. This is message for today. Let God release you. Tell your neighbor. In your business. In your relationship. Regular relationship. Such as marriage, business, even friendship. can break out of sheer circumstances, just like that. And that the origin of relationship is God. Until God releases us, cannot quit the relationship. But today, it does not take us anything, just disagreement, misunderstanding, conflict, we quit the relationship. And uh, you cannot do it alone. You keep quit relationship. Business partner, marriage, friend, you move from one church to another, just like that. It doesn't take you anything. Without God release you, when are we going to settle with relationship? That is the question you need to ask yourself. When are you going to settle with the relationship? You can count how many business partners you had in the past. Friends. And the Bible says relationship begins with who? With God and then to humans. Relationship begins with God and then to humans. If relationship begins with God, we cannot just quit from it under any circumstance. Something that you are not in origin. You can't just quit under any circumstance, unless you are released, you cannot just quit from it. And you know God can speak through disagreement. God can speak through conflict, through tribulation. Adversity, God can speak through them, can speak joy through sadness. If God does not release us and we quit the relationship because of disagreement, because of misunderstanding, because of conflict, whatever, The way you quit is the way you enter the next relationship. Unless you are released. We don't leave relationship as a Christian because of fight, because of disagreement, because of conflict. 
adversity. We don't live relationship. Because the man that is your enemy today can be your savior tomorrow. Look at many of you that are in the church today. You know what you have said about this ministry before now. Or what you have done about this ministry. But today, you are here. Let me quickly take you to the message from the book of John 20, verse 23. John 20, 23. If you forgive anyone, sin. Their sin are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What the Bible is trying to say here is that if you forgive the sin of any, they are forgiven. But if you retain the sin of any, they are retained. This means we preserve the sin of other people. When we pick up an offense and have a resentment, it is impossible to establish a healthy relationship, a good relationship with a person who has left another relationship, resentful and offended. Someone who break a relationship because of misunderstanding or conflict. Now become your friend. There's no friendship there, you are destroyed. Come on. This is my brother. We are friends. But something happened and we start fighting. Hey, I don't know what happened. This is very foolish. Oh, maybe you am wrong or right. Or you are wrong or right. We have no right to go with that conflict and establish another relationship. If we now decided not to come together, and I now have another friend here, this man is in trouble. The relationship we are going to establish is purely disease, affliction, because he has a broken relationship here, misunderstanding, disagreement, unsettled. But now you are now my friend. And you too, you must have had your own somewhere. And we come to it. Can you see the reason why we are facing relationships that are neither lasting nor rewarding? This is why you end up relationship without reward. Because you fight this one, you end up the relationship and look for another friends. Remember, you carry conflict, hatred, bitterness, offense. Become a friend of another person. And the person too may have also have a broken relationship somewhere. Two of you are together. Can you see the life you are living? And you cannot succeed alone. You need people. You need friends. Jesus knew this. That is why he had disciples. He will not be able to succeed alone. It is impossible to establish a healthy, a good relationship with a person who has left another relationship bitter and offended. You can never have a healthy relationship, a rewarding relationship. This is why today, when you see a broken home, a divorced woman or a man marry someone who still also divorce, at least 90% of them still divorce because of the carryover they have, where they are coming from. If God releases you, you will not be under 
pressure to judge. To be under pressure is to be under the control of our circumstances. Allowing situation to control, to mislead, to overwhelm us. If you are released, you will go with joy, even in the face of adversity. For a good example, you know, attending church is a thing of God. But today, is someone just brought you here today. Someone just told you there is miracle here. That is why you are here. Someone just told you that a woman you have been looking for for many years is attending synagogue church. That is why you are here today. Someone just told you that uh, your chairman is a member of the synagogue church. That is why you are here today. Someone just told you that uh, the man you are looking for a contract from is a member of this church. That's why you are here today. Attending church is a thing of God. When we go to church, we are answering God's invitation. Do not live under any circumstance because it is God's invitation. Don't pull out of the church or a relationship under any circumstance. Disagreement, misunderstanding, taking offenses, whether you are right or wrong, we should let God release us. We should let God do what? Eh? If God releases you, even in the face of crisis, you will go with joy. In the book of Isaiah 55, verse 12, you will go with joy. Every Christian should realize that where God wants them to be, the devil will want to offend them, to pull out. If you are in a place where God wants you to be, the devil will want to offend you to pull out. The devil is always interested in where God wants you to be, where God wants you to go, where God wants you to sit, what God wants you to say. The devil is interested in it. Anytime you wake up and you are going to business and you start receiving an attack or something happened, accident, don't give up. Go there. Anything close to Jesus receives attack. If your relationship with your wife, your friend is being attacked, if your business is being attacked so much, knowing that mm, that is where God wants you to be. If you are in, in a place where God wants you, the devil will want to offend you, to pull out. You have abandoned a beast that will have put you in the warm mouth because of attack. You have abandoned a relationship that will have built your future and your career because of attack. You have abandoned, <laughs> oh my God. Think of many things you have abandoned because of attack and threat to your life. A business that will have put you in the warm up, you abandon it because so much debt so much lost, you abandon it. That is where what God wants you to do. Devil know that is why he's attacking you. You abandon something that will have changed your life. The business that will have changed you forever, you abandon it because of attack. 
friend that will have helped you because of conflict, because of trouble, you abandon that friend. Wives, a place that will have changed you forever, you stop because of attack and trouble. Think about that. The enemy, who is that enemy? You are the enemy of yourself. Why can't I abandon the synagogue church of our nature with what has been happened to me? How do you know what you are doing now is the right thing where God wants you to be? Don't try to make it easy for devil. You are making it easy for devil. Stay where you are. Don't bug. Stay where you are in time of great conflict. Stay where you are. Don't bug. Don't make it easy for devil. You are making it easy for devil. Making it so simple for devil to get what he wants. This is the common problem. This is why we do not wait patiently for God's release. Rather, it is trouble that releases us from relationship. It is trouble that releases us of the marriage. It is trouble that releases us from our business partner. Think back your journey. You will know. We do not wait patiently for God's release in our regular relationship. Rather, it is our circumstances that releases us. This is why we are always facing relationships that are neither lasting nor rewarding. You cannot succeed alone. You need people. But to get good people, you must walk through bad to get good. My Bible made me to understand that when you are looking for good, you can't just find it by mere stretching your hand. My Bible made me to understand that you go through bad, worse, bad, worse, before you can find good. This is why the Bible says, find out the truth. You must do some work before you can get the truth. To get the truth, you must go through wrong, false, who, and a lot before getting the truth. Find out the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It's not say get the truth. As Christian, we should see situation such as conflict, hurt, all form of offenses as God's way to strengthen our character. Tell your neighbor. See situation such as conflict, hurts, or form of offenses as God's way to strengthen our character. <laughs> situation should not release us from our regular relationship. See what situation have done in your life. It is the situation that destroy your marriage, the same situation that destroy your business because fights, disagreement, it's a thief, it's 419, it's a criminal, you see a phone call, this, that, that, he has duped you. If he duped you, it's not enough for you to leave the business. Stay and get used to the situation. The situation will mature you. Our situation attests to mature us. Let go your past. Let go this moment. Because another moment is coming. If I'm going this way, this direction, whatever I encounter on my way going, 
I should let go because I'm going to meet another woman. Every woman, let go, let go. This moment, somebody slapped me. Okay, I'm not going to stay there. I'm going forward to another moment. I should let go so that I can deal with this moment. I said, I can deal with this moment. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Yes, see me going. This moment, what happened? Somebody hit me. Okay, I might still want to go. If I still want to go forward, I should let go this moment. Because if I don't let this moment go, and I move to another moment, and somebody slapped me, and I still carry this slap of yesterday, today again, it means, you know what it means when you have a carryover. It's not a good thing. Carry over in your school. It's a very bad thing. So since you know you cannot succeed alone, you cannot do without friend, you cannot do without business partner, it's not possible. If our Lord Jesus Christ knew this, that is why he had 12 disciples. He had the disciple and distribute assignment for them. Because he knew he would not be able to succeed alone. So also you, there's nothing you can do alone. There's nothing you can do alone. There's nothing. If there's anything you can do alone, let me know. There's nothing. So you need people. When I say you need people, I mean you need good people. But to get that good people, you go through bad, 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 bad before you get the good. And if you are looking for that good, you don't want to deal with people, but just straight looking for good, you can never get it. Because the Bible says, find out. No matter what you are going through in your relationship, remember that relationship begins with God. If the relationship begins with God, it means no matter what you are going through, it will not release you from that relationship. Let God release you. If you have waiting patiently for God to release you all this while, I know sky will have been your limit. Many things you see bad, behind those bad that are good. A friend you see as a, a bad, bad, bad guy is the savior God sent to rescue you tomorrow. It may be bad today, but tomorrow is another person. Let God release you. Let God what? Look at many marriages today. It was this great crisis, conflict, that separated many marriages today. And yet they have not met the loved one they are looking for. Ask anyone that is in this situation, they will tell you that they are managing. Tell your neighbor, they are managing. Tell your neighbor. We are dealing not only with the hurt which took place in the new relationship, but also with the heart from the former relationship. Tell your neighbor, we are dealing not only the heart that took place in the new relationship, but with the heart from the former relationship. Too hot. The way you left this relationship, the way you will enter the new relationship, is a carryover. That is life. The hot of former relationship and the new one all together. I know you'll be very surprised to hear this from me that the business that will have turned 
you around. You abandoned it because of circumstances. A friend that will have helped you in life in the past, you abandon because of adversary. Can I ask a question? How do we have a healthy relationship? We know it is impossible to establish a relationship with a person who has left another relationship bitter and offended. It is impossible to establish a relationship with a person who has left another relationship bitter and offended. How does this message appeal to you? Thank you. How does the message appeal to you, sir? Uh, usually, there will be a lot of carryovers. And uh, the temptation is always there to judge the new relationship with the mistakes of the former relationship. And it always brings up bitterness. So such things, in fact, I witnessed a marriage where the new wife now, whatever he does, she does, the husband always refers, why are you, you are behaving like uh, this other woman again? Always remembering the experiences of the past marriage. So it's like a multiplication of the effect. Uh, it's not always uh, the best. That's uh, my advice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's hear from you, sir. Um, first of all, I must confess that uh, the sermon today is like for me. From the start to the end. And uh, yesterday I arrived from Sierra Leone. I came. Even before I came to the synagogue, I've been praying, I've been praying. Sometimes I set my time to come, I don't have time to come. I have other engagements. Like the marriage aspect, it has to do with me. The business aspect, it has to do with me as well. And the business aspect is even recent. Uh, the marriage aspect. Uh, I just want to say, from the time the man of God entered here, what I asked God for is what he's telling me. So I want to thank God. You know, it's, it's really excruciating. It's perfectly excruciating. It's, it, you cannot compare it to anything else in this world, even not losing money. When you lose a relationship, you have strived so much to keep. Thank you. Clap for him. Clap for him. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Lastly, which I want you to go over it again. Harboring offenses too long, too long, too long without forgiveness. The result is a life self imposed isolation and self centeredness and total caging. Harboring offenses too long without forgiveness. The result is a life self imposed isolation, self centeredness, and total caging. How do we know that you have not forgiven? Say you are forgiven, but how do we know you have not yet forgiven? Little time you talk, you refer to the issue. You keep referring to your loss, but you never refer to your gain. You keep referring to your loss, but you never refer to your gain. We know you are harboring offense without forgiveness. Tell your neighbor, you keep referring to your loss. You never refer to your gain. You keep referring to your failure. 
you never refer to your sources. How many offenses? Too long without forgiveness? The result is a life self imposed isolation, self centeredness, and total caging. Tell your neighbor, you keep referring to your loss. You never refer to your gains.